Hi there, welcome to the Fast Drop Kitchen. Um, I'm continuing my uh, series of demonstrations on sourdough bread baking. In this little video, I'd like to just go through some of the tools that you need to, to bake sourdough bread um, and some of the little tips and tricks that uh, you can use during this period where you can't go out and buy things. Um, but there are some tools that make it easier to bake, so let me just cover them in one short video. Um, so firstly, we've spoken before about how important it is to have a scale. Um, it just makes your baking more precise and allows you to follow the recipe uh, more precisely. It's just more difficult to work in mills and cups. Everyone has different size cups measures. Uh, you know, you can't estimate exactly where the line is on your on your milliliters in a in a in a jug. If you have to do it, of course, do it and Google, you know, what the ratio or conversion me metric is for, for cups and milliliters to grams, etc. Um, it won't be a train smash, but it just makes it easier. And in my general cooking now, I use a scale so much more um, because I find it is much more precise. So firstly, you need a scale. Secondly, you need something to, to keep your starter in. Um, this is one of the starter jars that I use. Um, I prefer using glass, you can use plastic, but uh, glass I find is just easier to clean and um, it's just cleaner and, and easier to, to monitor. I also like a straight sided jar as opposed to a round jar, but of course if you only have a round jar, use it. This one's actually fine because you can, you, you want something where you can get in easily, you don't want stuff to get, get stuck in crevices. Um, also, you can use a kilner jar like this, but um, actually for a beginner baker, I think the, the see-through glass is better. It can be a bigger jar too, but um, I tend to feed with smaller quantities of flour and water, so this size is good for me. Then, uh, if you have that, them, you can really use them. Small spatulas. Before I started sourdough baking, I didn't own a small spatula. And now I pretty much use it for everything in my kitchen. So I have a few of them. Um, but I just find that they're really easy to, to mix things with and, and get in all the crevices. And um, they're an indispensable part of my sourdough baking routine. If you don't have that, just use a normal spoon and you'll be fine. Remember, don't wash your starter or, or rinse your starter down the drain. Gluten is not soluble, so it will eventually clog your drain. But obviously, the little bits of stuff that are left on the spatula, that's fine to go, but don't pour a whole glob of, of excess starter down the drain. Okay, then to mix the dough, um, I tend to use uh, this, which I just got at the local um, utility store in town. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a lovely plastic, um, bread mixing bowl. You get them in various different sizes. Most of you probably don't have a bowl like this at home. That's absolutely fine. You can use any kind of plastic or ceramic bowl. Just make sure it's big enough if you're using a, a one kg quantity of flour. Um, otherwise, you can easily cut your recipe in half and only do one loaf at a time. But I do find you learn more by doing two loaves at a time. And your neighbors or friends will be very happy if you drop it at their gate if you feel like you're not going to be able to use or you know you're baking too much bread for your own use the more you bake the more practice you get and the better you get at baking so if you have the flour i would do the 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 one kg uh, or sort of volume of of mix okay so um then for my leaven i tend to use little bowls like this but you can use any glass bowl that you want it's not a problem Use a damp tea towel over the top if you need to, um, if you need to cover it. I have a, a instant read thermometer. Um, if you don't have one and you get into baking, put it on one of your wish lists for your birthday or whatever. It's under the DIY section at Take a Lot. Uh, just type in instant read thermometer and you will find it there. It's really useful for any kind of um, cooking to see what the temperature is of your water or your flour or, or whatever. Then indispensable are scrapers like this. Um, you get them in various different sizes. This one is really nice for, for the shaping of the dough. Um, it's my favorite one. 
but these ones you can cut out of uh, uh, if you've got any used um, ice cream containers just use the lid and and cut something like this out this shape is particularly useful and I use it to go like this to like scrape you'll see in my videos how I use it to scrape around the edges to keep my my bowl nice and clean and you can also scrape your hands with it um, so that you know you can manage the, the mess a bit, bit a bit easier if you don't have them don't worry you can cut a bigger size one out of an ice cream container to emulate this but just sort of make sure it's it's wet or or, uh, or has some flour on it when you use it to work otherwise things are going to get get stuck Okay, so after you've mixed your dough, you've used your starter, now you end up with, with uh, sort of your final dough that's, that's ready. You're going to divide it into two loaves, you're going to shape it. Um, then you're going to have to put it in something for that final proof. If you want to just stay uh, very straightforward, you can put your loaves into bread tins, any bread tins that you have around the house. Make sure they're well oiled so that um, the bread doesn't, doesn't stick to them. That's absolutely fine. Use bread tins if you like. But for the rounded, sort of more country style loaves that, that one is used to seeing, um, people tend to use things called bannetons. Um, and that's how they get the, 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 the sort of decorative circles on them. I like to use uh, these inserts on my bannetons. My mine happened to come with these uh, linen inserts, which was very useful. Um, I'm just trying to remember the website where I bought them, but I can always give you give you the name. They come in different sizes. Uh, if you're going to think about buying them, you might want to go for the bigger size, although the smaller size might fit in your fridge more easily, and even this shape fits in the fridge even easier. So if you're going to think about buying this after lockdown, uh, just think about what kind of space you have in your fridge. And I like using a uh, just a shower cap. These ones are from Crazy Store that I put over the bannetons to, um, to make sure that the dough doesn't dry out too much while it's proving. Now, most of you probably don't have bannetons because you've started baking recently. Um, the alternative is if you have any little baskets like this around the house, you can easily use them and um, just put this, just put a, um, a dishcloth in and put the dough in there to prove. Make sure it's well seasoned with flour so that the dough doesn't stick, um, but that'll work just fine. If you don't have any baskets, you can just use any mixing bowl that you've got. That's how I started out. Didn't have all the equipment when I started out because you, you don't know generally whether it's going to, you know, whether you're going to become a baker, so whether it's worth investing in the stuff. So just use a bowl with a with a thing inserted, and and you'll be fine. Make sure you flour everything really well um, before you use it. Okay, so that's that's the 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 proving part of it, uh, and then we come to the baking part of it. And um, here are some of my tips for that. Obviously, uh, some of you may know that when you bake, you need steam. And professional bakers uh, tend to have ovens that have like a steam injection button that they can press that, that puts steam in the oven that ensures that the, the outside of your loaf doesn't get sort of dry before it's had time to open up nicely. Um, so in the home oven you need to do some things to help to emulate that or, or help to emulate the professional environment um, so what we tend to do is we tend to bake in what we call a dutch oven which is um, just a pot with a lid this is an enamel type which you can get at crazy store or some of the supermarkets pick and pay shop right i've seen that seen them at that you can use that you want it to be something that can withstand quite high temperatures um, the other option is uh, a heavy pot like this, heavy cast iron pot. You can also use a Le Creuset pot if you want to, but don't uh, heat it in the oven uh, at too high temperature for too long. This pot, you know, can go at very high temperatures and nothing will happen to it because it is black. 
and um, you know I'm not too precious about whether it will get damaged but I've baked many loaves of bread in it and it looks exactly the same um, and it has it. So that's the Dutch, Dutch oven that you'll preheat in the oven uh, before, before you bake. The other thing that I find indispensable uh, for, for the actual baking part, and I will demonstrate this in a video on its own, is baking paper. Now, um, wax paper can be dangerous because you can have it on the wrong side, and if you have it on the wrong side, it will stick to your loaf at those high temperatures. And there's nothing worse than taking a loaf out that you've tended to and, and being really, you know, you, you think it's going to be great, and then you pull it out the oven and the paper is stuck to it. So this uh, bake, baking paper that doesn't have wax on it is perfect. Um, otherwise, post lockdown, please do look out for um, this reusable baking paper. This is from Tescoma. It's not that widely available, but good kitchen shops should have it, or even some of the plastic shops have it. Um, it, it you can use it again and again and again, and you can cut it to size. And um, I find it really works very, very well. And you, you don't have to buy loads and loads of baking paper. Um, I will also show you how to use it um, when we get to the actual baking demo. Okay, and then the scoring. Generally, you need a lame or something with a blade. This is the lame I tend to use, but I have a few different kinds. If you don't have a lame, Go to the cigarette counter um, at the, the supermarket and they will have um, blades. Just buy some blades and get a skewer stick, a nice thick skewer stick, put it in and that works very well as a, as a, a lame to, to score your loaf. Um, otherwise, just use a very sharp, uh, one of these Victory Knox knives, which most of you have got around. A serrated one works quite well to, to score. So that's the scoring part. Um, and then when it comes to baking, you need a very hot oven. So a hot oven, again, I'll, I'll demonstrate this in the baking component. Um, but these days I tend to bake, uh, I tend to bake in a oven without the Dutch oven. I, I make steam in the oven. And I've got a, a steel plate in my oven um, that I put the breads on. And this is a really nifty tool from Ile de Pan Bakery in Neisner. It's called a tea bar. And you pour the water, uh, very hot water. It stays in the bottom of your oven. And you pour the very hot water into this side and it kind of runs all the way along the tea and the steam kind of comes out enough of it to, to make your oven really nice and steamy. Most of you won't have that, but it's something to think about into the future. You can also collect some tins and uh, put them in the back of your oven with, uh, with boiling hot water in them and that will also create some steam. So I use these two things to create steam in my oven when I bake. And finally what I forgot to mention is um, when your dough is in the bulk fermentation stage, particularly as we go into winter and houses get cooler and cooler, um, you want to try and be able to manage the temperature of your of your dough. So um, when the dough is still in in your your container when it's fermenting, you can put it in, you can put it in the oven with just the light on. That'll give it a little bit more heat. Uh, you can just see. Don't put the oven actually on. That'll be too too much. But um, you might put the the light on and just see if if that helps. If your kitchen is really cold, say below 20 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, some of you might have a wonder bag. Uh, that's also quite a nice way of, of insulating your bowl and just uh, making sure that when you've used nice warm water to mix your dough and your dough after the final mix is around 26 degrees, if you put it in your wonder bag, it'll hold on to that heat or that it'll stay at 26 degrees for much longer than it would if you just leave it out on the counter. Otherwise, um, you can just get one of these orthopedic heat pads. Um, they fall like if you have a sprain on your arm or something like that. I think I also got this one off Take A Lot. <clears throat> and uh, I just put it on a low heat on the counter, plug it in, and it, it helps to just to keep my dough a little bit warmer in the in the in the cold months of the year. If, you don't, if you've got nice underfloor heating in a warm kitchen, then don't worry about it. But um, you will notice that your sourdough is a bit more sluggish 
as you go into winter and that it could take a lot longer um, than you're used to. 